Joachim, you happen to know very well Samuel Josefovich. I would like you to tell us his, uh, his spirit in the collection, how he drove his collection. So Sam, uh, Sam Josefovic uh, was, was a, an extraordinary figure, larger than life, uh, an esprit bon vivant, as we say in French, uh, somebody who, yeah, who really enjoyed life uh, and who um, came at the right time at the, at the right place in terms of the, 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 the art market. Uh, when I, I, I would say that I'm not exactly sure of the dates when he started, but I, I knew him in the late 1970s. He already was uh, a substantially important collector. Uh, there, were, there were two people, two individuals, him and another guy in New York called Al Trul, who both had started collecting more or less at the, the, the same area, which is broadly speaking, the late 1880s, early, early 1890s, mostly the Nabis, but not only uh, Nabis and uh, Neo-Impressionists. And this was a market that was uh, considered as post-Impressionist. That was, it was not either the Impressionists who were super po popular, nor the major, major, uh, Les Fards, the major beacons of, of post-Impressionism, Cézanne, Van Gogh, Gauguin, that were going and pray for crazy prices. They, they were interested in those artists as well, but they were looking at the, the la niche, if you will, the little interstice between those giants. And that were people like obviously Bonnard, Vuillard, but also lesser names. Uh, en grand, uh, you, you know, I mean, the, uh, du, what's his name? Who was the uh, Roussel, you know, ah people oui. like- the, 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 And also uh, Valoton. Valoton, Valoton, absolutely, and, and and some lived in Switzerland, you know. So he was, he had, uh, he really managed to. He lived in Lausanne, beautiful house, uh, and he managed to insert himself within that market. He pretty much created a market because there was almost nobody else uh, other than Altrul in, in in New York. But Sam really was uh, a truly passionate guy, and. Uh, decided to, to not only look at the, the discover, rediscover the quality of these artists who were a little bit obscure at the time, definitely not very popular, uh, and um, also decided to go at it very exhaustively. So he would scan the market, look for every single one. I don't have the, the list in, in front of me, but you know, it, it's a, it, it was, you, you went to his house, it was a, live seminar in, in history of art. You, you were kind of filling the gap uh, between what you had learned between, you know, uh, Pissarro, Monet, uh, Degas, Renoir, and uh, Gauguin, Van Gogh, uh, Seurat, etc. And that's that particular gap of only three or four years, he went at it with a vengeance. <laughs> so he was a very, he, he wanted this kind of food in a way. Yes, yes. You know, he, that's interesting that you say that because, you know, he was, I don't know if you ever met him, but he was a, yeah, a bon vivant. He enjoyed a great meal. And uh, I, I, yes, he had a large appetite for, for life, for the great, great cuisine and, and for art. And what was, and his, what was his aim? I think his aim was to, um, I think he enjoyed showing his collection. There's no question. Uh, it was not, you know, some collectors do it, you have to have a passion, but some, some collectors are, you could say, selfish, and then why not have self, self-interested, want to, to please themselves? There definitely was that with him, of course, but I think that he really got a, a, a kick, you could tell, when he was showing his collection and, and surprising people. He loved to see the sense of surprise and sense of admiration, sense of, wow, you have this, oh, I did not know, to, to get... Uh, Coller les gens, you know, to, 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 to get people stuck. He, he loved to find uh, new names like Vercade. Who knew Jan Vercade, one of the Dutch and Nabi, Nabi, you know. But major, very interesting guy. Um, and, and also, uh, he 
was he really got very excited about finding great quality in lesser names. I, I would say that this was kind of his uh, his uh, patent, you know, his signature. That's interesting, which is not very market oriented, in fact. Absolutely. Uh, well, at least it wasn't um, when I, I think what he, yeah, that's the other thing. He was a phenomenal um, businessman. You know, he, he was the, the Bezos of his, of his time. He made money by uh, la vente par correspondance. So oh. he, in, in, he did a sort of a Amazon type of thing and uh, sold his business. But yeah, I think he was a, a pioneer in the field and uh, sold his business for a few hundred million dollars and, and just decided to have fun. Oh, but okay. what, what he uh, did was to, he was completely very conscious of the fact that he made a market. You said that there wasn't a market, true, but mm. after Josefowitz, there was one. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. And, and when, did what, he, when did he stop buying? You know, I, th I think he never did. Um, he never did. And he was always looking at, uh, so he started with Nadi, but that was one of the areas. Um, I think he then, so I don't exactly know the relation, the personal relationship. He became friends with uh, Hélène Kiriasi, who was at the time, married or she, she, I think she lost her husband or I don't know uh, to a collector Greek a collector Ellen was Greek herself mm -hmm. uh, and they lived they lived in Lausanne as well Kiriasi uh, who passed away was a major fourth collector and Ellen and Sam became became good friends he introduced this lady to his son, Paul Trusevowitz, and Paul and Helen got married. It was an extraordinary yeah. uh, love story. And so that, if you see what I mean, I mean, they were very, very, a very close, close family. You, you also have another element in the family, but David Trusevowitz. David was Sam's brother. And extraordinarily, David and his wife, Tanya, did to fold paintings what Sam did to... Uh, to Nabi, oh, that's uh, it. symbolism, and so, and also he was collecting uh, Rembrandt prints. Well, that's that's correct. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, no, it was not just Rembrandt prints. As he was a um, yeah, that's a, so in in a way you're you're right. What your son was a collector of collections. He he is he established he built several collections. So once Helen came into his life, the Nabi, the sorry, the the, the fauve, and uh, the neo-impressionist aspect, he had an incredible uh, group of Signac paintings and and yeah, pointillist paintings. But also, Helen introduced them to uh, to Caillebotte. Caillebotte was another fascinating example of a true impressionist, a major major player in the impressionist uh, odyssey. Mm -hmm. But somebody who had been overlooked, somebody who was thought of being too pretty, cutesy, and so on. And they bought I mean, an incredible collection of, of Caillebotte paintings. So he wasn't just buying small names for little money, but he was bought buying great quality by small names and making... And, and you know, the, the people who were... Uh, I mean, who he loved to have at his table and, and were invited were museum uh, curators, museum directors. I saw more museum curators in that house than maybe in any given house, any given collectors, because collect, collect, curators were coming there to, to learn, you know, mm. to, dis to discover. Bon, merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. Mais merci à toi.